Hi, everyone. Welcome back again to this series of recordings we're doing with the Fairy Tales from the Rock authors. Uh, I am on today with Lena Ng, the author of the short story Rumparella, which is one that both editors Aaron Vance and Ellen Curtis absolutely adored. Thank you for joining us, Lena, and for sending us this lovely story. Thank you for having me, Matthew. I'm so Pleased to be included in your anthology. No, absolutely. Uh, it is abs well deserved because it's it's one of the, the the coolest ones in there. And we've already started to get some feedback from people reading like early copies that they really like it and want to see more of your work and stuff like that. So that's always great. Uh, what brought you to this story? What kind of led you to to write this? And how did the story come to you? Um. I you know, like a lot of us, most of us, we grew up with fairy tales and fairy tales have a lot of tropes that come up over and over again. And I thought it'd be fun to subvert those tropes a little bit. So, you know, the um, the wedding, the the protagonist, the um, humor, I wanted to make to do something a little bit different. That's awesome. It really shows, honestly, in the in the work. It's very it is very different, but it's still harkens back to the fairy tale like themes and and all like that and but takes a completely different spin on it i remember when the editors were reading it they got to yours and were like finally yes this is like this yours was like because they were they read them in a certain order and were like this is the this person gets it get, gets what we were going for kind of thing i'm so glad that you liked it Absolutely. Well, speaking of, uh, did you want to read a little bit of your 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 story there, Rumparella, for people? Sure. Perfect. Well, I'll Wonderful. read maybe the first couple pages. So no the story problem. is called Rumparella. Once upon a time, there lived a little man named Rumpelstiltskin, who had descended from imps and who could perform small magic, such as transforming straw into gold. Although he had no want for a wife, since he find, found women generally irksome, he had a desire for a son to whom he would pass down his secret magical skills, simple as they were, and who would take care of him in his dotage. So over the years, he tried cajoling women into giving up their children for straw spun gold. These women had many children, and since they lived in poverty, they would be comforted, comforted into thinking they were procuring a better future for the child by giving him or her away. With glee, Rumpelstiltskin took home his first child, wrapped in swaddling, who was hastily thrust into his arms. But he gads. As he unwrapped the swaddling, he discovered it was a girl. He gnashed his teeth in disappointment and quickly went about finding another, making sure this time the child was a boy. But with some thought, he realized there were uses for a girl for domestic duties, cooking, cleaning, bending clothes, weeding the garden, and tending to the chickens and the like. He named her Rumparella and his new son, Rumpelstiltskin Jr. For clarity's sake, to be referred to as Jr., and carefully brought them up as he had envisioned. To the boy, he taught reading and writing and his magic of spinning straw into gold. As Rumperola swept the floor and afterward sliced the potatoes, she looked on with longing as Rumpelstiltskin taught Junior to twist the straw, say the words, and spin the wheel until the dull straw burnished to brightness. She put the potatoes into a pot and asked, May I try now? No, said Rumpelstiltskin as he patted Smug Jr. on the head. No girls allowed. The boy became an echo of his father and agreed. Yeah, Rumparella, no girls allowed. Although Rumparella was not treated unkindly, she felt stuck in a box. Every time she wanted to learn something, not only to spin straw into gold, but also to speak to the birds and coax them into doing her bidding, another small magic. She was told to pluck a chicken or start the fire or wash the socks. To get around this, as she did the chores, she would position herself beneath a window or near a door or by the hearth 
to eavesdrop on these lessons and she would practice in secret. I love it. That's amazing. I, I, and it's so cool how you can take like an old story like that, like the Rumpelstiltskin narrative and update it to be about how we still treat uh, ch different children, depending on their gender and stuff like that. And, and comment on like stuff that's still happening in society today. It really speaks to the longevity of fairy tales. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Love it. Okay. Well, Lena, I've got a few Three very silly, silly questions uh -oh. to ask you. Very silly questions to ask you. Just about you, kind of like get to know you, icebreaker, get to know the the author type of questions, if that's okay. Sure. Wonderful. Okay. First one is, if you, Lena Ng, are going to be trapped on a desert island for the rest of your days, and you could only have three books with you to keep you company and read over and over again, what three books would you bring with you? Oh, that is a super hard question. But I have some books around me. So I have The Brothers Grimm. Oh, uh, yes. Tale. Very appropriate. I have, um, oops, sorry, I'm taking this off. It's Oscar Wilde. Oh, awesome. I love it. Yeah. And I have a book of weird short story. <laughs> So, that's amazing i'm just i'm i really i love short stories more than novels i think well pretty much if you look at my book collection so for sure it would have to be a whole bunch of short stories we're also lovers of short stories over here so that makes sense i i adore that that's great i'm not gonna have to find that weird book that's that looks cool it looks uh, big is it big it's massive it's massive and your it it spans from I don't know, maybe a century ago to current day. And it's just so, it it makes your mind open to what writing can be, I find. That's awesome. Okay, awesome. Uh, second question, and this one is so weird. I don't know if you believe in magic or anything like that, but for the duration of this question, pretend that magic is real. Oh, okay. Let's, let's pretend, Lena, you are walking through the forest. You know, it's really thick. You're pushing branches away and you stumble upon a castle. And like in a dream, you just know that's a magic user's castle. A sorcerer, sorceress, witch, wizard, doesn't matter, magic user. And you go in and you find a cauldron there, like in the middle of a spell. And again, like a dream, you just know the wizard or witch or whatever was one ingredient shy and they stepped out to get it. And they're like, it's in mid spell. They just need to add one more thing and it'll be done. Something comes over you and you take all of your fiction you've ever written, all of it, and you push it into the cauldron. There's a giant plume of smoke and an animal that was made up of the totality of your fiction comes out. What animal is appearing, Lena? Oh, it would be a, a, such a chimeral. It would just be nuts because yeah. I write all kinds of stuff. Surprisingly, I mainly write horror. People look at me and say, what's wrong with you? You look so normal. It's <laughs> such an ongoing theme. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I, but at the same time, I write like kid stories and I write romance. So I think it would have a very, very cute face, but there'd probably be something with tentacles at the back. Okay. I love it. That's awesome. That's great. And the last one, just to get a sense of like where you started, where your where your roots come from in writing. Uh, Lena Ng, what was your favorite book you remember from childhood or favorite story from childhood? Oh, I don't even know. There's so many of them. So, of course, when you read Lord of the Rings, it's such a momentous occasion in your life. So, you know, you start off by reading fairy tales. And then I was reading Stephen King maybe a little too early. So I used to have a lot of nightmares. <laughs> And then, yeah. you know, fantasy, like Lord of the Rings was such a huge deal in a lot of people's lives. And then you just kind of, you know, keep reading, reading, reading. And luckily, I live across the street from library. So I'm still reading, reading, reading. And I'm just hoping to be part of the whole library of books and short stories out there. So that's what got me into writing. That's awesome. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much again, Lena, for sending us this wonderful story, Rumpurella, and thank you so much for, for coming on and talking to us a bit. 
everyone check out the story give it a read and give lena your feedback because it's wonderful and and find her work wherever you can thank you again lena for coming on thank you so much for having me matthew and i hope everyone enjoys the story and the anthology i'm sure they will